This episode has been brought to you by JustInform.com. If you're tired of being censored, tired of having your data stolen and sold, go to JustInform.com, a social media site where all voices are welcome. So as many of you have probably found out by now, Kamala Harris decided to hold her big campaign rally, her first campaign rally in Oakland, and she actually used this ad to introduce that campaign and invite everybody. Take a look. Truth, justice, decency, equality, freedom, democracy. These aren't just words. They're the values we as Americans cherish, and they're all on the line now. The future of our country depends on you and millions of others lifting our voices to fight for our American values. That's why I'm running for President of the United States. I'm running to lift those voices, to bring our voices together. So please join me in Oakland on Sunday, January 27th, and go to KamalaHarris.org to join our campaign. Let's do this together. Let's claim our future for ourselves, for our children, and for our country. I'll see you in Oakland. How can an ad that had so many different ethnicities, so many races, and so many vibrant colors, for whatever reason, um, how can an ad that contained all that still be so vanilla? Right. Um, What do I mean by that? Well, do you all have any idea what she actually advocates for based off of that article? I mean, like, do you I want you all to understand something. Those talking points are the exact same talking points that a Republican could use while introducing themselves as a presidential candidate for 2020. And it would they it wouldn't be any different. They would probably get the same general. Oh, wow. Peace, freedom, dem- democracy. How did she separate herself? I bring this up because it's extremely important to understand when someone is taking you on a ride in politics. It's important to know where someone stands on the issues. And it's obviously just as important to see that they have some type of recent history backing it up. And I don't mean recent as in when you conveniently get into the Senate. I mean, you've had a pretty consistent career since what, about 2012? I know you were a DA of San Francisco. You became an attorney general of California or in the assembly at some point. Like, what does that record say? What did you advocate for? What did you fight for? What did you speak out about? Because even if you're the attorney general, you can go on record saying, I support this progressive policy and I will fight in court to make sure that it is upheld. What did you stand for? What do you stand for? Kamala Harris doesn't stand for anything. You, If you want to know what she stands for, I'll tell you the exact same thing I tell you about every other candidate. Look at where their money comes from. Does Kamala Harris stand for the people or does she stand with the corporate donors that she courted in the Hamptons who were all previously the the anointers, if you will, of Hillary Clinton? They were, that's what the article literally describes it as. Hillary Clinton's donor or Hillary Clinton's, Clinton's donors meets Kamala Harris in the Hamptons. And this was like a celebratory article. This wasn't a slanderous article. This was like they were celebrating this. Yes, it's her turn now. Just what I believe to be common sense should tell you. When someone takes corporate money, you cannot trust them. Why do you think Elizabeth Warren, in her entire time in the Senate, hasn't really gotten anything done? She's just done a lot of finger pointing and and wagging. Kamala Harris, did she say that she was going to fight for Medicare for all? No, what she said was she supports Medicare for all after Bernie introduced the legislation, um, but that didn't come because she wanted to say it. In fact, 
she was against it at first. At first, she was Obamacare, Obamacare, access to affordable health care. Look out for those words. And then she got a lot of pushback. She saw what happened to Cory Booker when he voted against a Bernie Sanders bill. And she said, oh, I can't I can't go the way of Cory Booker. I'm going to say what I have to say. And of course, her corporate handlers have allowed her to say whatever she's had to say. But even recently, notice that her rhetoric isn't quite as progressive. She's pulling the, she's pulling plays out of the Hillary Clinton centrist playbook. Don't make promises you don't plan on keeping, especially if you want a second term. Don't make promises that marginalize centrists because there is this idea that America is centrist when we are everything but at this point. But I think what's so insulting about this ad, not, it's not the fact that she literally said nothing the entire ad, she just said a bunch of words, right? But like Kamala Harris's ad is completely and totally tone deaf. Freedom? Do you know Kamala Harris's record when it comes to quote unquote freedom? She literally falsified, she said that someone didn't file paperwork in time and therefore, even though he is innocent, Danny Larson, even though he was innocent, he should stay in prison. Here's the funniest, the, the, the most messed up part about that is he actually had the paperwork filed in time. They had been filing this particular paperwork, these petitions, since before she was the attorney general. But they claim, but the reason why was because Kamala Harris takes, Harris takes money from cops and two cops were implicated. And a lot of other cases relied on those two cops' testimonies. And so, of course, she's going to protect the people who pay the bills. But she has the nerve to talk about freedom. The same one who wanted to make sure that prisoners could not get out of prison on an early sentence if they had a nonviolent crime to make sure that the slave labor in the California prison system did not get hurt. Her words. Her, attorney, uh, her attorneys. At her directive. You don't have to believe me. Look at the donations from at least 12 law enforcement groups, at least 10 police groups specifically. Democracy. You don't even believe in due process, let alone democracy. But it's it's tone deaf on a, on a deeper level than that. This. When you have an ad full of minority, you can't claim everybody's upset, everybody's mad, and then have an ad full of minorities smiling, because that's not the case right now in America. No one's smiling. We're angry. We're pissed. Do you even know what's going on in your own state? She's smiling and giggling, but a 2017 survey said that 13% of the homeless population in San Francisco... <sighs> have part-time to full-time jobs. People can't afford to live in a house despite having a full-time job. In San Diego, 20% of their homeless have jobs. In LA, 27% of their homeless have jobs. Full-time jobs. But you're laughing and smiling. In Oakland, California, in the Bay Area, which is one of the Bay Area just in totality is one of the most affected places by your policies and the policies of the neoliberals you refuse to hold accountable. The nerve for you to put up an a, a ad of people smiling and giggling like you are somehow the reason for that. It is completely and totally tone deaf. 44 million people don't have health care. And you hesitated to back Medicare for all and only back Medicare for all after you received backlash. Just like Cory Booker tried to pretend like he was for more affordable prescriptions after he lost his chance to be run for president. You, this has been one of the most horrific administrations. I still stand by what I said that it wouldn't have been any better with, with Hillary. In fact, it probably would have been worse and it would have been 
covered up in a much better fashion. We would already have been in the midst of a coup in Venezuela if Hillary Clinton was in office. No, I'm not disillusioned in that regard. But this still has been as predicted by most people. It's not like we were like, Hillary Clinton's going to be be like, we both know that both of these people were going to have horrible administrations. And it turned out that was true. And you're admitting this. It's widely known to most people. And you have a bunch of pictures of people smiling. I noticed that you didn't have any pictures of, of people from Standing Rock. Because you weren't you weren't there. So you probably couldn't know the hell that people went through while being there. That a woman lost her arm. That another woman lost her eye. People were on their deathbeds after being sprayed with water in below freezing weather to protect water that, of course, subsequently was allowed to be poisoned. Where was your voice when it mattered? See, when you position yourself like Kamala Harris has done to be a senator, which, by the way, a lot of people believe she's done illegitimately because, once again, she lost the Senate race. Made sure she prolonged it for another, what, 20 days or something like that? And then ended up winning winning by like 120,000, 150,000 votes, some, somewhere in between there, out of nowhere. Isn't that crazy how that works? That's not out of the norm with Democrats in California. Democrats in California find, the, the establishment ones anyway, they find votes wherever they need to find them in order to win. But I'm not surprised by the fact that Kamala, Kamala Harris is, is, is echoing and in, in, in using the strategy that Hillary Clinton used, which is pretend to be left of center, but make sure that the center knows you're still part of one of them. Because, well, Kamala Harris's sister was one of Hillary Clinton's chief advisors on her campaign. Kamala Harris's sister worked for the Podesta Group, which was Hillary Clinton's, was going to be Hillary Clinton's chief of staff, one of, obviously, her campaign, her real campaign manager, um, Barack Obama's chief of staff. Everybody knows what the Center of American Progress does. And this, this isn't new news. Like they, The Harrises have been in the neoliberal clique forever. You understand this. That's why she's been anointed. Because she does what she's told to do. And she's pretending as if the status quo is okay and everybody's smiling and all these vibrant colors. She didn't tell you anything she wanted to do and there's a reason for that. You notice how you, you haven't heard anything about a prominent black attorney general in California, especially being a female, because that was by design. She didn't want anybody to hear about the things that she was doing. Being put in a position like she was put in, that was a test. Just like Hillary Clinton has been tested. Just like Beto O'Rourke, all these corporate candidates have been tested. Are you going to deal with, how can your, your brand hold up against the backlash? Will you do what your donors tell you to do? And smile through it all. Because Kamala Harris doesn't look upset, does she? How can you possibly pretend? You know, because in her world, everything is fine. So maybe she isn't pretending. But how can you act as if we don't have a reason to be upset? I'm mad that Trump is in office, but I'm more pissed at the people who allowed him to get there. And you were one of them. You can't pretend. Honestly, I'm so serious right now, people. Trump has actually done more for prison reform than Kamala Harris has. Not even joking. She set California back in prison reform. Why? Because the private prison money told her to do so. I don't, it's, that's, the, that's it. 
It's that simple. She has an exclusive with CNN in Iowa for a town hall. Guess who donates, donated money to her to the tune of about 150000 plus? Warner Entertainment, who owns CNN, who now owns Kamala. If you don't believe anything else, believe that you will, you will do what the people who pay your bills tell you to do. Bernie Sanders takes money from the people. Tulsi Gabbard takes money from the people. Both of them swore off all corporate donations. What else? There's nothing really else to be said about Kamala. Like, you, she's out of touch. She isn't one of you. She isn't one of us. And this ad is just another painful example of that. It's out of touch. It wasn't from her heart. It wasn't real. That is not real life. This country is suffering. Our planet is suffering. Our democracy is in shambles. If you look at this ad, you'd believe it's all good. What do you think? Thanks for watching that segment of Mikasa Sukasa. You can donate to our Patreon and keep helping the network grow by clicking on the link in the description below. And also, make sure you join us at justinform.com. And finally, make sure you subscribe to us on Roku and be part of the very first independent news network on Roku TV. But more than anything else, always remember, find your balance. Peace.